Hello, this is Anne Mullen with Cycle Technologies. Uh, we're going to be talking about period tracking today and specifically find out from a women's healthcare expert about the basic and most important things to keep in mind if you want to track your periods. So hello, Dr. Benfield, and thank you for joining me to talk about period tracking. You're welcome. Pleasure to be here. So, Dr. Benfield, I'm very glad you could join me to talk about this because it appears or it seems that uh, period tracking is has become more and more popular in the past few years because of the new period tracking apps and online services and, and that kind of thing. And, well, before I actually ask you about period tracking, I was wondering if with your patients that you've noticed any increase in interest in period tracking because of uh, new technology. I think that certainly, um, especially for my patients who are, you know, looking to conceive, uh, it's a very important thing to do, and the tracking applications and, and uh, options make it a lot easier for women to do that. So I definitely think that um, it's just as important as it ever was, but now it's made a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's actually a very good perspective, especially on the fertility end. Uh, so, well, I'd like to step back a minute and talk about basic period tracking. Mm -hmm. And I guess, uh, just to be clear for people who are listening when we're talking about period tracking in its most basic form, we just simply mean, you know, when you take a note of when your period starts each month, uh, which, like you said, it's always been important and women have probably been doing for eons. Um, and so, Dr. Benfield, I know that menstruation and fertility health can be a marker for overall health and that when women go to the doctor, we're always asked the question, uh, when did you get your last period? Uh, what is in that question? What exactly is interesting for a doctor uh, to get that basic piece of information? Yeah, so it depends where... Um on a variety of things, but what your sort of goal for the visit is. What we do know, though, is that a regular period is a sign that the entire axis that controls our population, our menstruation, our, you know, fertility, if you have a regular period, it means that that whole system is functioning normally. So it's a great marker for us to know that the hormones that the brain is producing are being produced in the appropriate way, mm -hmm. that the ovaries are functioning in a normal way, that the uterus is functioning in a normal way as well. So it's just kind of a nice question to be able to confirm that everything is um, as it should be. <laughs> right. So it sounds like you get quite a bit of information just from that one tidbit. Exactly. We like to think of ovulation as the clock. So ovulation is really the thing that makes a cycle regular. And mm -hmm. if you, therefore, you can know that if a cycle is regular, ovulation is uh, happening mm -hmm. as it should. So it sounds like you would recommend to most women that they track periods. Is that an important thing you think for most people to do? I mean, I think that, you know, most people are fortunate um, that they do have a nice regular period and it's not um, something that's, you know, overly disruptive. Right. <laughs> so so um, I think, you know, if you have a gauge that everything is fine, probably everything is fine. But certainly if you're having any um, issues around menstruation or gynecologic history in general, um, then I think that it can be very helpful to have a track of the period because mm -hmm. your physician is going to want to know. And so when you're talking then, I guess, from a, a medical perspective, what kind of information? So if a woman's going beyond just, you know, the start date of her period, what mm -hmm. other kinds of uh, information details? Like, do you are you interested, in, for example, in premenstrual syndromes or, you know, mood swings and that kind of uh, information? Yeah, so, I mean, the main questions that we'll ask in general is, you know, when was your last period so that we know where you are in your current cycle for women mm -hmm. initiating contraception. That can be important to know 
or for, again, women looking for conception as well, that can be important. Then we'll ask, do your periods come regularly? So do mm -hmm. they come on a regular kind at a regular interval? And that gives us a sense of the functioning of the hypothalamus, pituitary, and ovary. And then we're going to ask how long the periods are in duration. Do they last five days or the last 10 days? Mm -hmm. That gives us a sense of how much blood loss is happening with the periods. And we're also asking how heavy they are, yeah. um, again, for blood loss. And then finally, um, how painful they are or crampy they are. So usually that's sort of the first wave of questions around the menstrual cycle and then you can get into um, associated symptoms certainly if that's an issue that um, that particular patient has. So if someone is tracking their periods those are the kind of things that they might specifically want to uh, make sure they're tracking and then the other stuff might just be for what's interesting for them. Um, I'm not sure they crave exactly. chocolate. So or... if it's... <laughs> exactly if it's particularly relevant for them or certainly for people who have uh, pretty significant symptoms, it can be very helpful to know the timing of those symptoms mm -hmm. in relation to the cycle because, you know, the treatment options or the ideas that you and your doctor might come to um, could vary dependent upon the timing of the symptoms. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting, not just that you have symptoms, but about when they occur is, is useful for the doctor. Exactly. Now, one thing you mentioned, you said something about the duration of the period and regular cycles and so on. And, you know, we receive a number of inquiries from women by email. Uh, they ask about periods and fertility and so on. And one thing that seems to be confusing is the difference between a menstrual period and a menstrual cycle. And I was wondering, is that something that you ever talk to patients about or does that ever come up? Yeah, I mean, I, they're all kind of getting at the same idea. The menstrual cycle is the more medical term and refers to the entire cycle. So mm -hmm. that from what not only what you as a patient would see, which is your having your period or having your menstruation, but also what's going on behind the scenes. So how the follicles and the ovary are developing when ovulation takes place what's happening to the lining of the uterus under the influence of the different hormones that change in a typical fashion throughout the menstrual cycle. So the cycle is kind of uh, referring to the whole process of ovulation and menstruation, whereas the period or the menses or the menstruation is really just talking about the bleeding that we have, which is what happens at the end of that cycle. Mm -hmm. And so you, it sounds like you kind of guide them through that, that process a bit, or, or the knowledge of it. Yeah, I think it certainly um, can be helpful for when you're trying to figure out for women who have menstrual disorders or um, uh, other kind of challenging symptoms, it can be helpful to work through that whole flow. Uh, now, something else um, that I wanted to ask you about was you know, who should track, and obviously it's women who, you know, do still have or have a menstrual cycle. Um, do you have different advice for, like, younger women versus older women, you know, teens or people you mentioned uh, in their fertile years when they're trying to become pregnant, that sort of thing? Um, when it comes to period tracking, what do you recommend? Yeah, I think that uh, we certainly know that women at the ends of sort of the reproductive age spectrum, so that's younger teens as well as women in their sort of, you know, mid-40s, are more likely to have an irregular cycle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, for teens, because the whole system is kind of just beginning to function and sort of figuring it out, um, they can have occasional times where they are not um, uh, they are not having a regular cycle, and that's usually in adolescence not something to worry about. It's just sort of the fits and starts of the reproductive system figuring itself out. And then similarly, when we have women who are in the sort of perimenopausal time period, in their mid to late 40s, they can start to have irregular cycles as well as the ovary um, sort of slows down in its function. So it is your concern about 
cycles that are not regular is much less in adolescents and older women. Mm -hmm. You know, speaking of irregular cycles, um, again, sometimes we get questions about regularity. And it, it seems like there's maybe a misperception about what is actually normal and what is uh, irregular. Um, could you talk a little bit about what is a regular cycle? Yeah, so there's actually quite a wide range of um, uh, cycle length that we would consider normal. And I think a lot of people think of it on the day of the month. Mm-hmm. And they say, well, I usually get it on the 15th of every month, or but then this month I got it on the 17th, right? And I think the first thing to be a you know, keep in mind, obviously, is that not all months are the same length. So you, if your cycle is the same duration, you wouldn't expect to have your period on the same day of each month. Mm-hmm. And then also to be aware that a normal cycle can vary in length quite significantly from anywhere from 21 days, so a three-week cycle, up mm-hmm. to 35 days, so a five-week cycle. Any time in that range is considered normal. And in adolescence, it can be even a little bit longer, up to about 45 days. Okay, so, so they can have very uh, varying it can vary cycles. quite significantly. But for most people, it's going to be fairly consistent for them. So someone who has a 21-day cycle most likely will continue to have, uh, you know, a period every 21 days. For those mm-hmm. women who have a longer cycle, they usually stay as a longer cycle. Uh, you know, another thing that comes up sometimes that we're asked um, is women who are on the pill or other hormonal contraception, uh, they want to know about tracking their cycles. And I was wondering, you know, what's your thoughts on that for someone who's having, a, you know, their cycle regulated? So I think that the last thing you said is appropriate is that actually when we, when you're taking hormonal contraception, the hormones in the contraceptive are driving the cycle. Mm -hmm. So they are supplanting your normal hormones, and they will cause you to have a regular period because it is the withdrawal of hormones at the end of the contraceptive pack that causes menstruation. So women who are taking hormonal contraception – that is cyclic, like the pill or the patch, or they're using the vaginal ring cyclically, will expect to have a regular menses because the contraceptive method is driving the cycle. So is it, I mean, is it something interesting to do to even track or is is there? Well, oftentimes, yeah, I mean, you don't really need to track because you know what should be happening. Sure. Um, But I think sometimes often women are using the contraceptive method in order to control irregular bleeding, heavy menses, etc. So you would certainly want to be comparing your period on the contraceptive to what it was before to make sure that it is in fact working well for you Mm -hmm. Um, and if it's not you know if the length of the menses is still the same the heaviness is still the same or you get bleeding throughout the month as opposed to just you know a one time at the end then that would be important for you to know to feed back to your physician so that you could figure out an alternate treatment plan. Right so if you're experiencing some anomalies it's probably a good idea to keep track of that. Exactly. Um, Well, and finally, I wanted to uh, talk about, you know, the different ways that people are keeping track. And, of course, it used to just be on a plain old calendar, and now there are smartphone apps. And I was just wondering from a provider perspective as a physician, are there any forms that are particularly useful to you um, when it comes to, you know, asking someone about something you might be experiencing um, I think the nice thing about using some of the newer technologies is, one, it's easier for Mm -hmm. the patient, right, um, as opposed to carrying around a calendar or trying to think, wait, which day was that? And they really make it easy for you to keep track and also keep uh, um, track of all of the parameters that are important, like heaviness, duration, et cetera. 
as long, but anything will work as long as you actually use it. So I think the convenience aspect is the thing that's the most kind of uh, beneficial about these newer ways to keep track of the menstrual cycle. So does it seem like people are more inclined to, to do it and do it regularly if they have smartphone apps, or does that make any difference? I think it makes it easier for sure. I mean, mm-hmm. especially when we're looking at women who are uh, working to conceive. Oh, sure. And, mm-hmm. in, you know, it's made it much, much easier for them because you can look at a variety of things together. It can give you graphic representations, which is e- easier to interpret. So I think, you know, when you really are trying to get the clear information that you need, using a platform that's been constructed to do that can be very, very helpful. Mm-hmm. And so do women bring these to you? Do you ask to take a look at uh, the information they've been tracking? Yeah. So, again, it depends on, you know, what particular thing they're using. Sure. But if they're able to show it to you in a clear way, then, um, you know, that's the most important thing. So uh, I've never shared, you know, done like a send it to me electronically. Um, okay. Okay. Uh-huh. Way. Right. Uh, but I think certainly um, anything, like I said, that can make it clear for both the patient and you is going to be very helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, well, this has been a very uh, clarifying information. I just wanted to talk about a few takeaways for anyone listening. Um, if there is anything I haven't covered, do you have anything in particular you think might be important to add? Um, I mean, if there were two or three things that uh, you might suggest to somebody about period tracking, what would you suggest that would be important for them to do? I mean, I think they just need to be consistent because we know that trying to remember even what we did yesterday can be challenging. So so don't um, rely on memory. <laughs> don't rely on memory. You know, try and do it on a daily basis if that's what you're doing or making sure that um, – you know, do it at the moment that you ha- start having that first day of your period or whatever it is that you're keeping track of because doing it retrospectively can be very hard and also means that the information that you're getting might not be as accurate. Oh, yeah, well, that's a good point. So um, that's something new. I'll make sure I'll write that down also for myself. Uh, well, thank you, Dr. <laughs> Benfield, so much for taking the time to talk about Uh, period tracking. Again, you had great tips. Um, If anyone listening uh, to this webinar has questions about anything we've talked about, please drop us an email at info at cycletechnologies.com. Again, thank you, Dr. Benfield, and bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. You're welcome.